with Care Brickbot, and this is one of the latest releases of Hello Carbot. Green Farm from a new Hello Carbot movie, roughly translated to the suspicious magic troop. Well, I guess Green Farm and another King Dozer were meant to appear back in 2020 when Season 9 was around. But I guess when they suddenly changed direction mid-season, they were dropped and now they are being introduced this year to tie in with a film. Truly a crazy yeah, moment in Korean toy history. As such, the packaging is very circus themed, like with all the red curtains and lights and the, and the blue spotlight and the star rings. Yes, there's the stylized word mark there. Like, there's the headlights there. And note that this is number 98. It's not into the hundreds as they've been currently going because this was meant to be in the season 9 range of numbers. But of course, it got pushed back. Yeah, excuse the box. This has been flattened. Yeah, the pretty basic bottom and then. Side view has the robot mode and vehicle mode. They the exact same for the other side. Yeah, the back of the box shows the two products here, King Dozer and Green Farm. Stamped 2022 of August. And here's a synopsis of the movie. Featuring, uh, featuring the main character, Green Farm, and a new, char new girl character for that movie. So its shape is recognizable as an armored personnel carrier or an armored car or armored fighting vehicle, whatever you like to call it, but you know it's recognizable shape with that the boat slope and a six or eight wheeler kind. Yeah, but this is a six by six. Yeah, with a wheels right in the front instead of like evenly spaced out. But there, there is a kind of a model there, yeah, but it is recognizable even if it's not any exact model of it, but yeah, but it's very recognizable as one with two extra cannons on the side. And for a military vehicle, it is very colorful, you know, like the blue underside, the green top, and the yellow all around. Yeah, I guess to make uh, just a pretty military vehicle more kid-friendly, just having brighter colors, but still evokes the military style with just the plain bright green, which looked much brighter in the animation. Yeah, I'm loving all the sculpted detail on this thing, like the implied metal plating and handlebar compartments. Like the front has a little hooks, a little bars, you know, you can hook things or tie rope onto. Like the nice transparent blue headlights and uh, yeah, the front has little slit windows there, like, and onto the side and off to the side here. And the rear view mirrors. Yeah, there's even a molded tool, like a shovel on one side and an axe on the other side. Yeah, these claws are mostly for the robot mode, but they have, they have nice six even wheels and the back. Also has transparent blue tail lights, but also an area that applies like a an opening hatch, you know, for troops to load into. And the top is all nicely detailed, like the silver plating, like painted here and uh, plastic here. Yeah, some more rivets and bolts. It's all sorts of raised greebling you might not be familiar with. Yeah, but it, this is recognizable as a hatch. And these things I found out are smoke dischargers. Yeah, I'm loving all the plastic and paint, like the, all the silver paint here. And there is some green painted in the right in the middle here. All across this striping because that's over blue. And the stripe of paint right behind the side windows. But that is pretty good color matching. Yeah, I guess these rail type cannons maybe give it a more sci-fi feel than may enhance or take away from the more realistic nature of the vehicle. 
Yeah, so I guess you could yeah, turn them off to the side like this at an odd diagonal angle. So yeah, that's a little weird. I'm not weird, just unconventional to have that at a diagonal. But yeah, you can fold back like that or just point them upward. Or you just, just completely remove them. So that looks more realistic. And there is a central port here. And which I guess you can turn like a tank, but that, I guess it's that shallow because it just has to transform. So yeah, that's, that's something you could do, but that's not the best one. Yeah, but yeah, that's something. I'm pretty sure in the animation, she's going to be just in the same average size as the other ones. Uh, not too big, not too small. But for vehicle mode scale, I'm sure APCs are supposed to be pretty big and tanky vehicles. Bigger than your average civilian car. Yeah, so this looks like a very good vehicle mode scale. Yeah, just a big old APC with some appropriate tools and then enough to carry like at least six troops in there, uh, in that back section. Wider than the average car, of course. Yeah, so I'm happy with this, having this that could fit into the other typical Transformer cars. Though technically she might not be that big. Now on to transformation. Best is to grab the claws and then split them apart. Pretty good clicking hinges there. Then unclick that from the two legs here. Fold down those legs. Wheels in the legs. And when you click in the torso all the way straight. Yep, there's a little spring out panel there. There's a little spring in there that unlatches when this separate central piece slightly nudges out the nubs so that it goes over and out. Little chest missiles. Arms down and then turn that around. And then another bit of automorph. Yeah, pull down this panel and the head pops up. Yep, just thanks to a simple hinge that connects to each other. So as the shoulders are mounted at an angle, yeah, you can just hinge and mount them at an angle, whatever angle you like. Yeah, I guess just by default, they're angled backwards. Yeah, just to give it like a stylistic arrangement of the cannons when not in use. Just flip them forward or off the side. Yeah, but if you just left them on for transformation, it will kind of look like this. So. Well, she is a big chunky gal and a very straightforward transformation. Yeah, it's just the vehicle front and then the back of the vehicle forms the legs and then sides of the vehicle become the arms. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's effective. Pretty broad shoulders and pretty short, I mean, uh, somewhat stumpy arms, you know, just for transformation and some claws, yeah, non-functioning claws, but yeah, I guess they for extra gripping. Although, um, I think the plastic might be a little hollow in some spaces. I mean, the plastic looks a little different, yeah, just from these elbow joints. They look like they're a lighter shade of plastic from the rest of it. Yeah, no, I'm not sure about the quality there, but yeah, that's something that's not that noticeable. Also, there's more detailing on the underside here, as with the legs. I mean, I love the grieving on the legs. This is a lot of leg grieving, like the spring suspensions, like, and more coils, there's even a turbine vent bolted in the inner green part of the leg. So cut down there so you can see that in there. So it gives it a more machinery feel. Yeah, all sorts of inner sculpting leg details. That enhances the pretty smooth outwards. The head sculpt has a diamond rhombus crystalline style to it, as in, you know, lots of pentagons and angles here, and especially the forehead. Little circular sides on here and a uh, multifaceted little faceplate there. And that light piping blue head there, it kind of <laughs> gets lost in the rest of the blue plastic. Or they go straight into the 8mm hands. Yeah, just for the handheld guns that also blend in with the claws. Yep, so you can have that look or you can flip them up at the stopper and have a little blade weapon. Little blade melee weapon. And uh, if you don't like this claw, I guess you could unscrew it off, like here and right in the hand, but then you'll be taking out the supporting rods in there too, which holds the panel and the fist together, so you have to get a replacement for that, and also 
the side, the completely smooth side will look pretty good with two holes, uh, so these claws are a must. Articulation is at a full 360 for the head. Nice bar socket, a bit bar socket, side to side wiggle and a little up and down. Three clicks all around. And a little bit of a transformational butterfly back. And the arms are, they go out, all the way out, non-ratchet, pretty tight ratchet, although it's the shoulders on a separate piece, so depending on which, how much tolerance and friction it, the plastic is in, the shoulder might flop around a bit. The elbows are at a friction 90, and uh, no bicep swivel, but a lower arm swivel. Just for the transformation, yeah, but that's... You can't put it on the side, so uh, yeah, that's that. Legs go forward, a little bit of a hard click, and uh, this kibble getting in the way for a full forward. And a completely clear backward. Hey, crotch has clampers. Friction the knee at a perfect 90. The full size of a l Watch for this. And uh, I guess you could go a toe in, but that much of the vehicle is transformed along with it, so that's not a viable foot forward. Again, in the show, an entire child would fit in the palm of her hand, but vehicle mode wise, she would be pretty big. Functionally, Green Farm is a very basic transformer car robot, but of course her main selling point is at the fact that she's an APC, or a military type vehicle, which is not that quite common in modern transformers. And with such a nondescript alt mode, I imagine, you know, this could be appealing for uh, as a good base for all sorts of customizing options. Yeah, if you just, you know, take that pretty standard green and just painted a darker green or a camo. This could be a good realistic pseudo model, pseudo scale model of an APC vehicle. That means serious business. And it looks like it could fit a couple of other Transformer characters with this vehicle archetype. It may have taken a delayed two years to get her out, but she's finally here and she's worth it. As with her co-mate, 